You might be surprised that reverse polarity when you have your hot and neutral wires reversed at simple fixtures like these lamp holders or duplex outlets are not always apparently obvious. This lamp holder, green dot, wired correctly. This one wired incorrectly where I flipped around the hot and neutrals, but both of them work. So from the outside, you can't really notice anything, but the one with reverse polarity, although it looks good, has a safety issue that you wanna avoid. I also added a couple duplex outlets, again, correctly wired and incorrectly wired, so we can demonstrate with some simple tools and a little knowledge how you can go around your house and make sure everything is wired correctly so you don't unknowingly have an unsafe scenario where something as simple as changing out this light bulb might give you an unwanted surprise. First, we'll talk about outlets and plugs. So here are three common types of plugs that you'll see for 120 volt outlets. You have the one on the left hand side here that is a polarized. You can see the two prongs are of different size. The wider prong is supposed to line up with the wider slot, which is your neutral slot. So it would plug in like this, but would not be able to be reversed because the width of the prongs would not match up to the width of the slots. Then you have a polarized three prong, even though those prongs are the same width, because you have a ground, it's only going to plug in one direction. And then on a lot of your modern electronics and chargers, you'll see that these are a non-polarized plug. The prongs are the same width, and then they can be plugged in either way, and it doesn't matter because they have a little additional circuitry inside that makes them adapt to that. In addition, most of these, and it'll be printed right on your plug, can accommodate from 100 volts to 240 volts. That's why you can travel to different countries that have a different standard, and your charger still works without an inverter. So outlets are a little bit easier to identify if they're correctly wired or if they have the neutral and hot reverse, and that is with a simple outlet tester. This one made by Klein Tools three LEDs, pretty much all outlet testers have three LEDs, and then depending on the combination of LEDs that are lit, that will tell you a little bit more about the wiring on each of these outlets. So for this one, we would expect that we have everything correct. So those two orange lights should light up, and you see that is the case. Now for our side that has reverse polarity or where our hot and neutral are reversed, we would expect the red and orange to be lit up. And we see that as well. So we can quickly identify what the issue is, and then you can start to take off your cover, do your troubleshooting, and correct the issue. Additionally, you can use a non-contact voltage tester, understanding the larger slot is neutral, so you would not expect a beep. And the smaller slot is hot, so then we see the beep. Again, on this side, we would expect the smaller slot to have the beep to detect voltage. That is not the case. It is actually the larger slot that detects voltage. This is also where a multimeter comes in handy when you're troubleshooting and trying to understand what's going on. I would set that to voltage AC. I know my box is grounded, so I'll set the black probe on the box. Then I'll test across the hot to see about 118 volts. Test across neutral, expecting not to see any voltage. I don't. Then on the reverse polarity duplex outlet, I'll test the hot side, right? The smaller slot, not seeing any voltage. And that's where this neutral side, because it's reverse polarity, is seeing the 118 volts. So if you're gonna be doing electrical work around the house, an outlet tester, a non-contact voltage tester, and a multimeter, all three of those together are about $85. You can check those out on our Amazon store and Klein Tools, bang for the buck, I think is perfect for DIYers. So that's why I'm recommending those along with all my other tools, which is a good combination of cost and durability, really focused on the DIYer. So I just want to finish off the outlet part giving you the so what, because if you plug a device in, the device is indicated by this dashed green line. If you plug it into hot and neutral coming from your outlet, correctly wired or reversed, what does that mean and why does it make a difference? Because the device will probably work. The space heater will work. The coffee maker will work. So what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is if it's correctly wired, we'd have a switch in our device, we'd have an on off switch, and then some type of resistant load. Think again, space heater, so just creating heat. The hot side would then be connected 
to the switch. The switch is open, so the hot itself is not gonna go anywhere until that switch is closed, and then it would pass through the resistant load, create heat, or whatever the device is doing. When we have that reversed, again, we have our switch and our, and our resistant load. The switch is open, but because the hot side is connected in reverse, now you have the hot actually connected all the way through and it will stop. It will not turn on the device because the switch is open, but your hot is connected all the way through that device, which can create a safety issue or can reduce the life of your device that you're connecting in. So that's kind of the so what on why you don't want things reversed, even though the device might perform as expected. Now onto the lights with a correctly wired lamp holder and a reverse polarity incorrectly wired lamp holder. Both of those lights work, but one of those is unsafe. And I think this is one of the most common unsafe conditions if you have reverse polarity. And why is that? Well, if we turn these lights on, both of them are working, doesn't seem to be any different, but we have our multimeter. So again, I'm going to use my two probes. I'm going to ground off my grounded box and I'm going to actually put my red probe to the threaded part of the socket and we're not getting voltage. But if I go to the reverse polarity and put my red probe, you see I get 120 volts. Hmm, interesting. So if we unscrew these, light bulbs okay things turn off now these are incandescent light bulbs but it works the same with led all right so now i have exposed threads right as i'm unscrewing the light bulb i could very easily touch those exposed threads again let's test this because our light bulb is off right so hmm, we'd think that we don't have any power there but if we test across those threads we see that we have still a connected hot conductor to these threads. And this is where the unsafe scenario comes in, is with a normal light, right, your thread should be connected to neutral, and then only that small middle section should be connected up to hot. But if you reverse those, now the small middle section is gonna be connected up to neutral, and now all of your threads are connected up to hot. A lot of surface area that you can easily touch and basically create the return to source. Now remember, with electricity, the hot side always wants to return to source. So in this scenario, I'm not giving it a neutral. That's why it's not on, right? If I give it that neutral, now hot side is returning to source. It is powering this light bulb. But now I still have a hot side here. If I touch that, I can create a grounding path or return to source, and that's where you get bit. Now usually that's just a small shock. It's not a big deal. It's gonna surprise you, possibly scare you, but not something you want to chance. So this is why when it comes to reverse polarity, I think this is one of the most common unsafe scenarios because you have such a large surface area now exposed and connected to your hot conductor. But let me know what you guys think. Have you ran across these scenarios before? Specifically, what are those unsafe scenarios that you've encountered? Or is all this new to you and you're just trying to get your head around home electrical so you can do simple updates safely around the house? Your feedback really helps to sculpt the future videos on this channel. Now, if you wanna continue on this learning journey, check out this video right here. It's gonna give you the full breakdown of outlets and a bunch of features that you might not have been aware of but are gonna help you on those future projects. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on the next one. Take care.